Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf, and today we are looking at Array Collisions. So what exactly do I mean by Array Collisions? Well, basically, say you have your player object that may look something like that. Uh, observe my amazing uh, art skills. And he would normally be inside a room. Now, what you could do, for example, is uh, actually just place objects for him to collide with. But you may want to, in certain cases, actually have an array defined, like something like so, and have him collide with different cells, um, you know, having uh, containing different uh, blocks. Now, I don't see why you would do this for, say, a platformer, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, I'm just using it as an example to show you how you can manipulate uh, arrays uh, differently and um, how you can um, you know collide with them basically or get information from them uh, in different ways. Now um, what we are actually going to be using rather than arrays today are uh, DS grids. So uh, let's see. so today is with DS grids. The reason for this is simply that uh, they're a lot easier to use when you want to set uh, a big area of uh, information. Uh, for example, um, if you're going to set up your level and you just want something really quick, um, you may want to use a DS grid set region function in order to, you know, splash a big area. Um, you know, and this is what we're going to be using. However, for the whole tutorial, you could really replace anything with a normal array if you prefer it. So uh, what we're going to be doing is simply creating a player object, uh, filling a whole DS grid, in this case, with um, values and uh, seeing if we are colliding or not with it in order to get a platformer-like uh, character. So without further ado, let's jump into Game Maker. So here you go, oh, this one. Right, so I already have um, three sprites created. The first being the wall, the second uh, lava sprite, and the third, which is the player. Now, it's actually quite important to note that um, although the wall and lava sprites uh, are both centered uh, with the origin at zero, um, the player sprite is actually not centered uh, in the middle of the sprite, and that will be quite important once we start um, once we start actually doing our collisions. Now, what we're going to do first is create our grid object. So I'm going to call it obj underscore grid. I'm not going to give it any sprite, and I'm going to go directly into the create event and add in a piece of code. So what we want to add in here is uh, simply a small, uh, a few like um, variables. The first one is going to be cell size. This is the height and width of a uh, grid cell inside uh, the game. So right now our sprites are actually 16 by 16, so I'm going to set this to 16. Uh, if you're following this tutorial at home, make sure also that both your wall and love sprites are 16 by 16. If they're a different size, you can obviously change this number to whatever size they are. Uh, the player sprite doesn't actually matter that much because we're going to be taking care of dimensions of it inside our code. As long as it's centered, it should all work fine. So what we want to do now is define the width and height of our grid. So width is going to be equal to the room width uh, divided by the cell size. And our height is going to be equal to the room height divided by the cell size. Nice and easy. So we're going to now create our grid. And our grid is therefore equal, equal to DS grid underscore create width and height. So I haven't actually covered grids yet, I don't think. Uh, I think I covered DS list, but not DS grids. So DS grids are actually the same as DS list, but work in a grid format. So you first define the width and height of it, uh, of the grid in cells, not in. It doesn't have anything to do with the room. We're going to be having to add this ourselves, and um, it works in a very similar way to arrays. So really, this is the same as saying grid uh, width height. Is equal to 
zero. This right here is uh, creating a, an array with width and height, uh, with uh, you know the size, width, and height. And um, this is basically the same thing, but using DS grids. So uh, they're a lot easier to use, in my opinion, than arrays, and a lot more useful. So what we're going to do now is add uh, the first, the first basic level inside our game. So we're going to do DS grid underscore set region. So this function will actually set uh, the values for each cells within a region of the grid. So the, it takes in a few arguments, the first being the actual grid ID, which is the variable uh, we set over here, which is just grid. Then the starting X position, which is going to be zero for us. The starting Y position, remember, uh, zero being at the very top of the grid and uh, 100 being 100 steps down. We want uh, our level to start at around 25. You can change this obviously uh, to suit your needs, but um, again, remember that this video and this tutorial is mostly to demonstrate how to use a few, um, a few techniques and it isn't really recommended to use this technique for an actual platformer game like we're going to make today. So we want the width then and the height. So the x2 value is going to be width and the y2 value is going to be height. So it will cover everything between 0, 25 and width and height. So uh, yes, and we want to set a value. Now we're going to do this the easy way and set it directly equal to our wall, to our sprites of the wall, like so. Um, what we want to add now is uh, two more regions, the first being a small um, block of wall on the right, so TS grid set region, let's just copy this actually. And we want it to start at around the middle of the world, so we can just do width divided by two I guess. And the height, we want it to be slightly higher than our current wall, so we can set this to 23 for example. So this will give it a two block ledge. And now we can copy this again, paste it over here, and this time we want it to start on the, at the very left, but stop just before. So instead of having width over here, we can put maybe uh, 15 or so. And so this will basically create a level, so let me bring up paint. Um, let's create a new, let's just create a new thing. This will basically, ah, oh, damn it. A new level that will look something like so, with two ledges here and here. And our player will be able to jump up and down, etc. So back to uh, Game Maker, we can now click OK and start actually making it, making it so that you can draw out this level. So we're going to go inside the draw event and dragging a piece of code. So what we want here is a double for loop or a nested for loop, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, so we're going to start it by going var xx, making sure xx, uh, sorry, var xx is equal to zero. xx should be smaller than the width, and we're always incrementing by one. Now we're going to add the same thing for yy. Now the reason I'm putting var in front over here is because we only need these uh, variables for uh, you know the following piece of code. We don't need it anywhere else. So var will mean that uh, the, the data isn't anywhere, no, isn't in memory for much longer than it needs to be, and uh, it it means it's much the program will be much more um, memory efficient. So here we have our nested for loop, so it will go through all the values of y when x is 0, then all the values of y when x is 1, etc, etc, basically iterating through um, all the grids, grid space, um, all the cells inside the grid space. So we can now uh, get the tile, so var sprite is equal to the ds underscore grid underscore get and the ID is grid, xx, y, y. So what we're doing right here is basically DSGrid DS grid get will uh, access the, the DS grid you created and return the value at the x and y position you put in. So right now, we're for every single x and y value, we're getting this sprite. 
and then we're going to be drawing out this sprite. So, oh, but only if the sprite exists. So if sprite, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. A sprite draw underscore sprite. So it wants to draw the the actual sprite we just got. Um, we don't want any sub images, and the x and y position will be xx times the cell size, so that um, it actually has a nice separation between each of the tiles uh, of the size of the tile, like it should be. Uh, if you didn't put the times the cell size, they'll all be clumped together with uh, only one pixel spacing every time, and that's not exactly what we want. And we want to do exactly the same thing over here. Times cell size. Right, so I'm actually going to check something right here. Yes. Now, there is, um, I did do something quite stupid right now. The problem is that uh, the indexing inside uh, Game Maker works as follows. Uh, the first sprite you create will have index 0, the second sprite will have index 1, and the third sprite index um, 3. And right now, we actually have it so that a spear of wool is index 0. So right now, um, if we do if sprite, it will register it as a zero. So what I'm going to do really quickly is actually take this guy, this player sprite, put the origin at zero zero, and let's quickly edit it so it is actually a wall sprite, something like that. Nice and easy to do. And rename it SPR wall, and. Put a one at the end because otherwise it's not going to save when I press OK. Change this one to be SPR player, and quickly edit it to be a player sprite. Now the reason I'm doing this is, um, well, as I said, because we want to have our indexing correct, and um, I am changing the sprites rather than creating and destroying them because I'm not quite sure how um, how the indexing will behave once you start. Creating and destroying. Now, actually, I should note that you have to center your player sprite. I did forget to do that. And now you can take off the one at the end of SPR wall. Now, hopefully, you've been watching this video before actually doing the tutorial. Uh, this way, you can actually do the fix before you actually start doing it. Um, that was an error on my part. So, uh, a little bit of troubleshooting before actually, you know, encountering the problem. Uh, I did encounter it before, and I just noticed I did the same mistake again. Uh, but um, as you can see, I fixed it right here, simply by making sure the first sprite is SPR player. So right here, this is the, group, the, the um, code to draw. So we can press OK and uh, place the objects inside a room. And now if we actually play the room, we should see that we get our level drawn out. And we get an error, simply because I didn't type with correctly. So um, I have to go back into here and see where it is I didn't write it correctly. I think I spelled it correctly over here. Um, aha, it's right here. I often invert my T and H's because they're so close together on the keyboard. Um, so well, you probably saw that in other videos um, when I invert letters. But here you go, we get a level being drawn out. And what is happening is every single step, um, the computer is going through every single line, one after the other, drawing them out like so. Uh, actually, to be precise, we set it up so it would actually go vertically. And um, yeah, uh, the good thing is that it's quite quick. I don't, we shouldn't see much lag. Um, that's because Game Maker Studio has a much better performances. Uh, this didn't used to be very possible in um, Game Maker 8 because loops were very slow and drawing one of those levels would only run at maybe 4 FPS. Uh, so if you are do doing this on um, Game Maker 8, you may encounter uh, pretty bad performance issues. So let's actually start adding in the player. So let's create a new object. Uh, here you go, call it OBJ player. I did set the sprite to this player sprite. And let's start doing some code. So let's create a new event uh, and let's go into the create event. So there are a few variables we want to set here. Now, GameMaker has built in the vSpeed, HSpeed, 
um, and speed um, variables, but we're not going to be using them because we want a lot more control over what we're going to be doing. Uh, we could use them, but uh, the problem we may encounter problems later on when we try to add uh, jumping, etc., uh, with the order uh, in which events take place. Uh, it may not. Um, work out in our favor. So we might as well start directly from vSpeed. So I'm going to call it vSpeed with a capital V so that it doesn't register as the actual vSpeed. Notice how vSpeed without a capital V uh, actually becomes red. That means it's a built-in variable. We don't want that. We want to have vSpeed with a capital V so that it is not a built-in variable. So we want to set vSpeed to zero. Let's have grav for gravity to uh, 0 0.1. Now notice how they spell gravity else all the way because gravity is also a built-in variable. I'm going to have heap speed with a capital H set to 0 again and last but not least I'm going to call this W speed. Now I'm just using a capital W right now simply because um, it's to keep with the rest of the different speeds and let's set this to 4. Now W speed, I'm not, I wasn't quite sure what to call it, I couldn't use speed by its, on its own because it's already a built-in variable so I used W speed and that is basically the speed at which the player will be able to move left and right. Uh, v speed is a current vertical speed, H speed is a current horizontal speed and grav is the gravity. Um, so let's save changes and go into the step event just not one, and add in a new piece of code. So the very first thing we want to do in here is apply the gravity. So it's quite simple to do. We do vSpeed plus is equal to grav. So every step we're adding 0 0.1 to our vertical speed. Next, what we want to do is make vSpeed equal to 0 if there is a uh, wall underneath. The way to do this is, first of all, to check whether um, underneath the player there is a grid or not. Well, if the grid is full or not. So what we're going to do is do ds grid, Ooh, excuse me, uh, get. And for the position, well, for the, first of all, for the ID, we want obj grid dot grid to get um, the variable stored inside grid of obj grid. The x we want to have the x position of the player and then we want it to be divided by the cell size of object grid. Now if we simply have divided then we'll have some um, errors once we get you know for example if you have 8 divided by 16 you know we'll get 0 0.5 if we have uh, 12 divided by 16 we don't get nice round value. So instead we're going to use div instead of divided. So instead of the slash we write div um, obj underscore grid dot cell size. Now what div does is um, it checks how many times it can be divided into uh, evenly. So if you have 5 div 2 it will give you 2 because you can divide 5 by 2 twice and then you get a remainder. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing with the y. So y div um, obj underscore grid dot cell size. Now this actually will give you the um, grid at the position of the player. Now we don't exactly want that. We want the grid underneath the player. So first of all at y we're going to be adding the y offset of the player. So if I open the player sprite over here, now if, your quali if the quality on YouTube is good enough, you will be able to see that um, if you add the y offset, which is 8, on here you will actually go down to uh, the bottom of your sprite. So we're going to simply add the y offset, which can be accessed by writing sprite underscore y offset and this will give you the bottom of the sprite. Now this still isn't exactly what we need 
because we actually want it straight underneath it. So we're going to add one pixel. So this will give you the pixel underneath the player. Uh, one, no, the grid, one pixel underneath the player. Now, we need to do something with that. So we want to check if it's equal to zero. Because if it is equal to zero, um, if it isn't equal to zero, it will be equal. Uh, this whole thing right here will be equal to zero. So if there is something underneath the player, this whole statement that we just have written will be equal to zero. Uh, just to recap what I just said, because I wasn't wasn't very clear, if there is something underneath the player right here, this will return zero. So what we're going to do is times v speed. Um, by whatever we just had. So that if there isn't anything, it will be equal to 1, so we just times it by 1, it doesn't change anything. If it isn't equal to 0, it will be equal to 0, and if we times it v speed by 0, it's equal to 0. Uh, the reason I'm not using an if statement to say like if ds grids get whatever is equal to 0, then v speed is equal to 0, is because uh, if statements are slower than um, than doing multiplications. So uh, in effect, what I just written is actually the same as doing all of this. This is essentially the same thing. Um, however, uh, this is slower, so we're not going to be using it. Next, we want to um, make sure that the player isn't stuck inside a wall. So, you know, if you're falling down, you can imagine your player, and then it's moving maybe five pixels every time, and then it's four pixels away from the wall, maybe two pixels away from the wall, it moves down six pixels maybe, or seven pixels, depending on what your gravity is, you know, it will go faster and faster. Uh, it will be, you know, five pixels down into the ground, and you want to move it back up. So we're going to use a while statement for that. So what we're going to do is while ts could get where is it right here? So again, obj underscore grid dot grid. We want again the x position of the player divided by. Uh, the cell width. Um, sorry, obj underscore grid dot cell size, just like before. And this time we just want the bottom of the player, not um, the bottom of the player plus the one. We just want the bottom. So we're going to use y plus sprite y offset. Put this in brackets so that it is the bottom in room coordinates divided by obj underscore grid dot cell size. And this converts it into grid coordinates. So as long as there is something at you know the exact bottom pixel of the player, we need to move it up. So we're gonna use y minus equal to one. Now, um, so this will take care of our V speed. It doesn't actually move the player yet. This, so this here will add some gravity to the V speed. This will make sure V speed is zero if you're touching the ground. This here will, <coughs> sorry. Um, this here will enable the player to move out of the ground. And now we'll attack going on H speed. So h speed, Rambo capital H, is equal to, and now I want to get the left and right keyboard. So keyboard underscore check, vk right minus keyboard underscore check, vk left. Now what we just did here is uh, sometimes referred to as an axis. Um, well, that's what I would call it anyways. And what it is, 
basically is since game maker treats true and false values like boolean values as 1 and 0 if you are pressing the right key h speed will be equal to 1 and if you're pressing the left key h speed will be equal to minus 1 uh, you uh, hopefully you can see that um, and this is really really useful because it allows you to quickly add uh, you know you don't need multiple if statements or anything you just directly have your HP value now we can times this by our W speed value in order to make sure um, it's actually going at the right speed so before this will have a magnitude of 1 now this has a magnitude of W speed so what we want to do next is start moving our player. Now this is quite complicated because we don't want it. Um, we want it to move by, you know, H speed, and but we don't want it to clip through anything. Um, but we still want it to move left and right. So the way we're going to do this is a slightly long window. Then probably not the best way of doing it, but it's quite simple really to understand I believe there's probably more efficient ways but here's how we're going to do it today so we're going to add a repeat and we're going to repeat it hp the amount of times now the problem is that if hp is negative we're not we're not we're not going to be repeating it so what we want to do is get the um, absolute value of hp there you go so we're repeating it you know this amount of times. Next, we want to check that um, to the right or to the left of the uh, sprite, you know, of the object, we want to check there's nothing. Now, the way we're going to be doing this is by using, uh, by only using one statement, so one uh, if statement, we can check, um, we can make sure that if we're going on the right, there's nothing on the right, and if there's something on the left, if we're moving to the left, there's nothing on the left. So we're going to write if ds grid get. So again, obj underscore grid dot grid. We want to have x position of the player plus, and now this is where it gets uh, a bit strange. So first, we want to have the sprite x offset. Here you go. But to that, we want. We'll, now, if we're moving, say, right, we want to check uh, to the right of the player. But if we were moving left, we want to check to the left of the player. So we're going to times it by the sign of h speed. Now, this sign actually um, will return 1 if h speed is positive and minus 1 if h speed is negative. Um, so if we're moving to the right, h speed is therefore positive, so we're timesing sprite x offset by 1. Nothing changes. However, if we are actually going to the left, h speed is therefore negative, so sine of h speed is minus 1, so we're timesing sprite x offset by minus 1, effectively doing x minus sprite x offset, checking therefore the left pixel uh, of the player. Now, to that, we need to add one pixel, just like we did up here. You know, we want to check one pixel to the right or one pixel to the left to see if it's frame. Now, the problem is that if we simply add one right now, um, we'll always be checking to the right of the player, and that's not exactly what we're looking for. So we want to use this sign right here again. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And basically, now, again, if we're moving to the left, we'll be taking one away rather than adding one, etc. And all of this, we want to close the brackets here and divide it all again by obj underscore grid of cell size to make sure we find um, what this pixel is inside the grid. Now let's attack on the y. So y is quite easy. It's just y div obj underscore grid. Uh, yeah, obj underscore grid dot cell size. Now. We haven't tested all of this yet, but it should work fine. Oh, and we want to check that this is equal to zero. You know, make sure there's nothing there. And if there isn't anything there, we can add, you know, 
1 to x. Now, if we do add 1 like this, we'll always be moving right. That's not what we want. Once again, we want to use sine hp so that if hp is positive, if we move into right, we add 1. If we move into left, we take 1 off. So this should be quite you should be quite familiar with using sign now. So I'll just save this quickly and go into the room. Um, actually, we already have a room right here. Add in our player. Move it up. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Delete this. Move it up. Make sure that it actually moves how we want it to move. Um, so it's now... And... Uh, well, we're moving left and right, but I did forget to add an essential piece to this, actually, so a bit of troubleshooting. Right now, we're not doing anything to y, so what we want to do in the very end is do y plus is equal to vSpeed. So here we're modifying vSpeed up to here, and here we actually now are adding um, uh, vSpeed to whatever y was, so we're actually moving up and down. Um, I hope this makes sense. Um, so yes, now we see we're moving left and right still, and as you can see, we can collide. I won't go any further this way because of the script we had, which stops us from clipping through walls. Same on the left. So everything is working nicely. Now you may want to add, finally, uh, some jumping. So before y plus equal to v speed, we want to add some code. Now it's very important to put it before because we actually uh, want to change vSpeed before we modify y. Uh, so now we're going to check if we're pressing the keyboard. And if dsgrid get. Now we want to check that, again, the same grid. x div obj grid dot cell size so again you know just the position of the player in the grid and now we want to check again just underneath so I'm actually going to copy this from up here where we checked with v speed uh, you know where we modified v speed to be equal to zero if there is something I'm just going to copy that paste it right over here and close the brackets open these parentheses and do v speed this is equal to minus 3, for example. This will be our jumping speed. Um, so, in case you didn't follow, um, if keyboard pre check pressed, VK up, just check that you're pressing up on the keyboard. Um, and the following line over here uh, will simply get from the grid uh, of OBJ grid um, whether at the position of just underneath, one pixel underneath the player, the player uh, if there is something. So this will stop us from jumping uh, in the air. Now I did press play, but on debug, so you, it will look a little different, but that's just because I pressed debug instead of normal. And uh, as you can see, we can now jump, uh, which is rather nice. Now, uh, you did see that I was clipping slightly when falling. This is because we're actually checking in the center of the sprite. Now, if you want, what you can do is um, actually, when you're doing the checking, um, you can check it for, you know, two areas. Uh, you can check the right corner and the left corner, or you can be extra smart and uh, figure out which corner you should check. And this will allow you not to clip through the wall. Now I'm actually not going to cover this because um, it will take a lot more time uh, figuring exactly how to do it properly, um, you know, getting the code to look nice, and I don't feel, feel like it's necessary for this tutorial right now. So yes, now I did create another sprite, remember, which was the lava sprite. So now we're going to look at how we can add, um, you know, some lava in the world and how we can get you to die if you touch it, for example. So I'm going to create a new region. Here we go, let's copy this. Let's go here and let's say that on the right, maybe, you know, where... Uh, let's go at, I don't know, 30 all the way to width and we want to set that to SPR lava. Now I'm just going to check that the the world is set correctly so I'm pressing play again and I'm just going to check that the lava is put on the right side so yeah as you can see we have lava on the right now and right now it doesn't do anything special so let's see how we can make this act in a better way.
So first of all, I actually want to check, change something really quickly. And it's uh, where we had lava. Instead of height here, I'm going to set this to 24. This way we'll only have one layer of lava, not the big block we had before. And let's go inside the player. And let's add a new um, piece of code. I'm going to add it right here. And I'm going to go over here and copy um, where we had our while statement, the DS grid gap we had. So this right here. So let's just copy it and paste it right here. So remember, in while, the while statement, while loop, uh, the DS grid get um, script we had actually checked uh, the exact bottom of the player, not one pixel underneath, but the exact bottom. So now we're going to check if the exact bottom of the player is colliding with SPR lava. And we're going to just I'm just going to stretch this out so you can see. I just made it equal to SPR lava. And I'm using a double equal sign because that's how you compare things. You could use a single equal sign, but I strongly recommend you get used to using double equal signs. Uh, because if you want to move on to another language, um, well, most of the languages use double equal signs, not single equal signs. So it's a very important you get used to it. Um, what I'm going to do here is simply do room and let's call restart. So this is a very simple way to check if you're colliding with another type of block. Here I'm checking if I'm colliding with SPR Lava, and if I am, restart the game. Really quite simple. So it should work out fine. So once again I can still move normally, and if I do jump and collide with SPR Lava, it restarts the whole game. Perfect. So this was how you can uh, manipulate, you know, and check different things um, using arrays. Uh, this was actually using DS grids because uh, they're slightly easier to manipulate. However, all of this can be redone using arrays. Um, it's exactly the same process. Uh, you'll just have to write some extra code to get the DS grid set region working um, for uh, arrays. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you actually make a uh, platformer like this because it is actually not the most efficient way. You could use, um, especially when it comes to drawing, you get a lot, a lot of loops, and especially if you're running on HTML5 or mobile devices, it won't play very nice. But it's a lot better if you're, you know, having a maybe um, if you have a Minesweeper game, for example, you may not want to have a separate object. It's quite messy uh, for Minesweeper. I would use a, a grid and. Uh, have this same system and check where my mouse is clicking simply you know by using the div uh, cell size every time uh, so yes uh, that was it for this tutorial thanks you guys for watching uh, if you enjoyed it please uh, like and subscribe for more and I'll see you guys next time